Hey, today I'm going to go over adding pull quotes and titles to a design in Adobe InDesign. Uh, first thing, as far as adding a title, uh, earlier when we placed a story in the other tutorial, it was just placing a Word document that's already been typed out. But small little pieces of text you can often just type in manually. First step in that, go ahead and open up the same file that we've been working on from the earlier, or just go to File, New, and Document. Hit OK for letter sizes find, and insert some text. And um, once you have that, choose the Text Tool. Um, you'll notice right here, just the Type Tool, and you press T is actually a shortcut to it. But what you want to do is just click and drag across the top here. And then we'll type in a title, for example. I'll just say Alice in Wonderland featured at local movie theater. Okay. Now you can click and drag, and this works pretty much like Word. You can click and drag, or you can press Control A or Command A on the Mac, and it selects everything. And from there, you can change it to various sizes. And often you don't want hyphenated titles. So you can go to Window, Type in Tables, Paragraph, and uncheck Hyphenate on the Paragraph Palette. Now you can, for example, experiment with different words so it goes all the way across. Uh, for this example, you know, if you just type in manually 40, uh, probably. 44 is pretty large. Um, then you can just type in another word or two. Some people like to center, other people like to left justify it. Um, so for this one, I'll just say Alice in Wonderland feature at local movie theater Friday. Okay, so that goes all the way across. And it, uh, you can click and drag the bottom, or click and hold on the bottom of the toolbar, tools palette, and just go to preview. And this kind of gives you an idea of what our publication will look like. And notice at the bottom, these aren't quite aligned, so you'd want to pull these up just by one. So you have them aligned all the way across. And actually, this one needs to go down just a bit. And on this one, actually, I could pull the top down there and align it a little bit better. So that kind of lines up. And bring another line down here. There we go. So we have a layout here, the title, the beginning of the story. If you wanted to add a byline, you could just add one right here with another text box. Again, right there above the text, you'd want to pull this down just a little bit probably, add a byline in there. And uh, for as far as the pull quote, um, I'm going to add one on the second page. But first, if you wanted what's called a deck, or uh, some people call it a subhead, but that's something a little bit different. Uh, uh, below a title, a deck is basically it just goes right here, and it adds to the information in the story. It doesn't really reiterate or summarize the same exact thing. It would just say, you know, featured at this. It would add to the information. Okay, I'm not going to put one there just for time's sake. But if you wanted to, you could uh, put one right below the title, just make a little bit room for it. And it's usually a font that's larger than the body copy here but smaller than the actual title. As far as a pull quote, I'm just going back to normal view here. And a pull quote, often you want to find a interesting quote from the story and focus on it. And then you will have add a text wrap to it so the body copy wraps around it. So I'll just make one up here uh, with the type tool. I just click and drag and I'll put, I thought the film was Great. And then let's say the person's name. Let's say Jane Smith. And I'll make this quite a bit larger. Okay, so we have uh, kind of a pull quote here. If you notice, I bring it over here, it just goes on top. So what you want to do is go to the text wrap palette. If you don't have it open, go to Window, then text wrap. I click the third option there. And you'll notice it goes around the text there nicely. Probably want to add a bit of a buffer around the edges. Make sure this is 
clicked and it will uh, lock all four of those together so it's the same all the way across. And then you can choose where to put this. Notice if you do text wrap again, you don't want it something like this where you have almost like one or two words on a line. Usually putting them in a corner is helpful or on the side. If you do put it in the middle, that's fine, but as long as you have uh, don't have just very small lines on either side. So I'll just, actually I'll probably just put it to the side here, like that. And we can preview what it'll look like over here in a preview. Okay, so that's the basic idea of a pull quote. If you wanted a background to that pull quote to delineate it from the rest, you need to get rid of the text trap first. And actually probably wouldn't matter, but if you had a text trap with the background here, that would not work out. So um, go ahead and go to the rectangle tool and we're going to make the foreground, I don't know, I'll just make it some kind of blue color. And it's on top of the text there, of course, so you want to bring it back a little bit. So go to Object, Arrange, Send Backward, and that just went back one. If it didn't do that yet, you could do that again, or you can always do Control, Left Bracket, Control, Right Bracket on the Mac, Command, Left and Right Bracket, and that brings things forward and backward. So if I added a text wrap to this blue box, it would actually move that text wrap text out of the way. If you notice there, that doesn't work. What you need to do is first group these. So click and drag around both of them, go to Object Group, then add the text wrap, the third one there, and then you can move it around. You have a nice text wrap here. Okay, And you can add one pica all the way across, and you have a nice little story here where you have the title, the flowed text, the image, of course, and the pull quote to bring attention to specific quotes. So that's the basics on titles and pull quotes. Thank you.